dear colleagues, dear friends, impunity is what enables or allows a man with power and influence to impose violence on a woman of less power, or a girl, or a child. Impunity is not only the daydream of some crazy individual who, um, although he has been to law school, thinks he can get away with crime because he has a powerful job. If only crazy individuals turned into rapists, while everybody else, including their friends and colleagues, um, would, uh, would blame them, then of course no perpetrator would get away with crime. Every part of society would push him to the corners of fear and isolation. This impunity system makes sure that fear and isolation fall on the victims. It is a terror system and in many respects a kind of civil dictatorship. In our democracies the law states that men and women are equal and that violence is forbidden, so how do they do it? <laughs> how do they do it? By relying on the media, just like any re um, dictatorship would. And I have tried to come up with five ways, I have identified five ways in which the media promote impunity and uh, in the mean, in the same, at the same time they target feminists <laughs> because feminists, as you all know in this room, stand on the side of the victims and the impunity dictatorship goes with feminist bashing. So here are the five ways I have identified so far. There are probably many more, but we don't have time today. <laughs> strategy number one on the part of our enemies, strategy number one, the freedom of expression theory, which is um, the art and advertising um, are allowed to express any type of representation, violent representation, regardless of the impact it will have on victims and social education. Um, if you complain, because feminists do complain, if you complain, they'll argue that you have no sense of humor, which is wrong, and they'll come up with the freedom of expression theory. Clearly, they are standing for the free expression of sexist violence. There have been several scandals in France uh, where political celebrities have rushed to support the artistic expression of sexist violence. So I'll give you just one example. In 2009, the French Minister of Culture, Frédéric Mitterrand, who's the nephew of our former former president, um, gave public support to a then unknown rapper who rapped about how he would abort his girlfriend himself with a knife and how he intended to Marie Trintignier her. He made this verb. It was a reference to the actress Marie Trintignant, the mother of four children, quite a famous actress in France, who was beaten to death by her boyfriend, a famous singer, in 2003. The Minister of Culture compared the rapper to the poet Arthur Rimbaud, and while feminists called for censorship, the macho establishment, Minister of Culture and others pleaded for freedom of expression. Strategy number two, after freedom of expression, strategy number two, the no harm or consent theory. The argument is that no harm was really done and everybody should just carry on as normal. Example, the no harm theory was widely used in the support given by the French macho establishment in support uh, to Dominique Strauss-Kahn when he was arrested here two years ago. Political celebrity. We have a big, a big uh, trend. We have a big trend in France of political celebrities who, who are friends with the media, um, and they make one phone call, and here they are in the media supporting their sexist friends. So in the DSK case, it was crazy. They were all over the place, and they invaded the French media. Um, and they, they, are, they are in the in French intellectuals, you know, so they have like intellectual arguments. <laughs> <laughs> so political celebrities invaded the French media, arguing that Dominique Strauss-Kahn was a ladies' man, which in France is a compliment, that you, the USA had never understood anything about sex anyway, unlike the French, 
and that chasing chambermaids was part of our cultural heritage. <laughs> and that nobody had ever died after performing oral sex in a hotel room. And another example was uh, in September 2009, the French Minister of Culture, the same one, and the macho establishment supported film director Roman Polanski when he was arrested in Switzerland following the American request for extradition for allegedly raping a 13-year-old girl in 1976. Our Minister of Culture told the press, quote, Polonsky's arrest is absolutely dreadful, and he declared that it was a known story that really doesn't make any sense. Okay. His attitude was not surprising. He had published a book in which he described buying access to the bodies of young boys in Thailand. Despite all this, he remained the Minister of Culture because in France, this has never led anyone to resignation. <laughs> Strategy number three, the uh, he is only human theory. He is only human. The accused is presented as a normal human being, as it was Isaway rightly uh, described, with his understandable and forgivable weaknesses. It's very well used when a man kills his uh, wife or former partner. Uh, the French media, I'm sure in Italy it's the same, they always mention, mention that this drama occurred because of passion and love and romantic love. Um, the men's needs and impulses are evoked also in prostitution scandals. And the media are very strong advocates of this only human theory. One example, just two weeks ago, 21st of February, the daily newspaper Liberation published an article about Oscar Pistorius, who had just killed his girlfriend a few days earlier, and the article ended like this. Behind the heroic and famous sportsman, jealousy, anabolic pills that cancel all inhibition, violent sexism, is just an ordinary human being confronted to his passions and impulses. <laughs> Strategy number four, the conspiracy theory. They have to convince us that someone has an interest in making accusations of sexual violence in order to ruin someone else's reputation. It was widely used in the case of Dominique Strauss-Kahn because his arrest was taking place just before the presidential elections and he was said to stand a good chance um, in front of Nicolas Sarkozy. The conspiracy uh, theory scenario was that Nafisa Tudjelo had been paid by and sent by Strauss-Kahn's opponents um, and as evidence, they argued that no one is forced to perform oral sex, which shows their lack of knowledge on the topic. Another ongoing case, which I find very interesting, is that of Julien Assange, the WikiLeaks activist, who faces two sexual assault allegations in Sweden, where two women claimed that he had forced unprotected sex against their will in August 2010. The Stockholm Criminal Court took this seriously enough to issue an international arrest warrant. Uh, but to avoid this extradition to Sweden, Julian Assange moved into the Ecuadorian embassy in London in last June. And he claims, and his friends claim, that the whole thing was a set up uh, by the Americans and the CIA to have him face trial in the USA. He has received the support of many stars, and in February he was awarded the Yoko Ono um, Lennon Courage Award for the Arts. Okay, so, but I believe impunity also lies in the imposition of unprotected sex, so we have to follow this case very closely. The last strategy they use is the no scandal option. Uh, people know that things are going wrong, but they're not saying anything, they're covering the facts. Remaining silence. Is someone an accomplice if they know but don't speak out? Are they also the victims of the impunity dictators who bring fear and isolation upon them too? Yeah. Are they afraid of losing their jobs? It's a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. We are looking at a case in the UK right now. Jimmy Savile, very famous BBC yes. presenter who died last year. Dozens of people are now speaking about his um, sexual assaults. And nobody ever spoke about this before, although his assistants, people in the BBC, producers, everybody knew something and nobody said anything. So one of the solutions, I just want to finish with one of the main solutions, would be to get to, to the general public and tell them that it's okay to stand up and say no. 
um, we have to to put the balance of powers in our favor. <laughs> um, by doing that, we will change things, and we need, in that respect, to train the media, train police forces, um, and and get to the general public because there are, I know, there are on this side, uh, but they just need to feel free to do it. <laughs> Thank you.